Hi everyone, I'm Sabiha, a Code Microsoft Student Partner, and today I'm going to introduce you to the Microsoft MakeCode Arcade platform. So, what exactly is MakeCode Arcade? So, it's actually a free, open-source, learn-to-code platform where you can create games with just a drag-and-drop approach or by using a JavaScript coding approach. So, to get started, go to makecode.com, scroll down, and click the button that says Arcade. This is going to open up the Arcade homepage. So let's see what is there. So on the main screen, you can see that there is an option to create a new project. You could use one of the uh, tutorials to learn more. Or you could scroll down and see uh, blog games that have been created by the MakeCode team or by the community. And you can also watch in few uh, live streams uh, that have been recorded so if you are interested in some advanced concepts you can always check them out so in today's session we're going to create a fruit game so let's get started by giving our project a name So in the fruit game, we're going to have a character who's going to try to get in as many fruits as he can and basically there's also going to be a countdown. So the character is going to try to collect as many fruits and try to get as much score as he can within the time limit. So now we are in the make code project workspace. There is a lot going on right now in the uh, workspace, but we're going to go over the three major sections. On the left hand side, we have the game simulator. So here is where you can preview your game that you've created. You can use the trackpad here to actually move around uh, your character. You can also use the uh, keys on your keyboard, uh, the arrow keys, to actually play the game. Uh, on next to it, you have the block toolbox. So this is where you can find all the blocks that you need to create your game. So if you want to add music, you have a music category where you can check in the blocks related to music. If you want to add images, you can also do that. And we're going to be covering a few of these blocks in the coming few minutes. On the rightmost side, you have the programming workspace. Here is where you can add in, uh, to, to, uh, add in all the blocks that you need to create your game. And this is where you put in the logic of the game. Right now, a program uh, looks very basic, like we don't really have anything. So if you take a look at the game simulator, it's blank. So let's start off by adding a scenery at the background. So let's give it a background color. So go to scene and set background color and choose the oval and choose a color. So I like this lime green color, which I'm going to go with. Next, you can see that it has automatically uh, changed the color to green. So on start is, remember, whatever you put here, it's basically going to run when the program starts. And you can find out what a block does by just hovering over that particular block and that hint text shows up when you do that. Now we need a character. So to add a character, we're going to click on the sprites tab and select set my sprite to and drag it after the current block. Now, sprites are basically 2D graphics that are used to represent your characters. So let's design our sprite. You can do this by clicking on the, uh, this particular uh, oval right here. Next, what you need to do is uh, you basically play around with this editor. This is called as the pixel editor. And here you can draw in your character using the paint tool like this and you can use in a rectangle to add in your character as well so let's actually just create a, a small character that we can use in our game so i am going to use this paint tool right here and make a character face and i'm going to add in some hair for the character and some eyes and let's also give this character a body And you can always use the eraser tool if you feel like you've made a mistake. Now let's use a rectangle tool to create their shirt. And let's add in their hands. And you can also use the fill tool to fill in particular sections like that. Now let's just add a few legs to the character and just 
like I like this so I'm gonna go ahead and press done when you do that it's gonna add in your character onto the screen now the problem is I can't move my character I can I can try to use these but these are not working so you need to set in some conditions for that so go on to controller tab select move my sprite with buttons and now let's try to move it along with the buttons so now you can see my character can move but if I move too much to the left it goes off screen now we need to avoid this so we're gonna go back to sprites we're gonna scroll all the way to the bottom where we see set my sprite to stay in screen so I'm gonna grab that block and set that to true so like set it to on now if I try to move across the screen I'm no longer able to go off screen so that's a great thing next thing I need to do is set in the score so initially when the game starts I want to set the score to be zero and when the user then tries to claim and eat fruits I want the uh, basically I want the score to increase so you can find the score related uh, blocks in info so go there select set score to zero now if you take a look at your game you can see this uh, little icon at the top that says zero next what you need to do is add in a countdown so go back to info tab go down and select a countdown so i want the game to last as uh, as long as the countdown is not zero so i'm gonna start from a countdown of 20. so now you can see there's a countdown and there's a score now we need uh, fruits that the user can eat so let's go ahead and create that First, we're going to go to game tab and grab on game update every 500 milliseconds. Next, I'm going to go to sprites. Scroll down till you see the sprite called set projectile. Grab it and add it here. Now, basically, click on this little icon that you see right here. And let's choose a fruit. So go to the gallery. And I'm going to choose a fruit, let's say this uh, Strawberry looks pretty good to me, so I'm gonna select it and press done. Great. Now let's see what is happening on screen. Okay, so there is a strawberry. There are many strawberries, but they're going in this weird angle. So let's go back to our code and see what's happening. So in our code, uh, it says on game update every 500 milliseconds. So th whatever you put inside this block is gonna uh, run every 500 milliseconds the set projectile block is basically used to set the fruit but the way they are actually moving across the screen you have to uh, basically change that by using vx and vy values so what are these vx and vy values well vx is actually the velocity in the x direction and it is the horizontal uh, direction so if you want to move from left to right you could put a positive 50 value vy is the velocity in the vertical direction and it is used to move your character move your character or your sprite in the top to bottom direction so since we want the fruits to only move from left to right we are going to change the vy value to zero so now if we try to run it you can see the fruits are only moving from the left to right direction Great. So next thing what we need is to uh, make sure that these fruits are spread across this entire uh, arcade screen. So before we go forward, you need to understand that the arcade screen dimensions are basically 160 in width and 120 in height. So since we want these strawberries to kind of spread across on the height, we are going to first go to sprites tab, select set my sprite position and change this to projectile because we want to change the position of the fruit so we're going to set it that way and we want the y values to vary that is the height to vary so we're going to grab this pick random function and choose from 120 to 0 to 120 so what this does is basically give these fruits values between 0 to 120 for y. So that's why they're generated at different different places. Next thing is we want the character to be able to actually collect the fruit or eat it. So to do that, we are going to go to sprites again. Scroll down till you see the uh, block that says overlaps. So we're going to grab this particular block. 
So on sprite of kind player overlaps with on sprite of kind projectile. So when the fruit overlaps with the player, do whatever's inside this. So we want to increase the score. So you're gonna go to info, choose change score by one. Now let's try it. So now if you see, it is increasing the score, but it is increasing it indefinitely. Like we need some way so that the character cannot make use of this advantage. So what we could do is now destroy the sprite after the user eats it. So go to sprites again, scroll down till you see the destroy sprite and add it to your code. Now you need to make sure what you're destroying is actually the other sprite. So grab this other sprite, just drag it onto here. And this is going to make sure that the other sprite is the one that's destroyed. Now let's add in some extra uh, effects. So click on the plus and choose a nice effect. So I'm going to choose bubbles when our fruit is eaten. Let's also add in some music. So I'm going to choose this music right here. So from the music tab and let's uh, choose this magic wand sound and let's try it again. So now you can see these bubbles generate and this nice little uh, sound that is also being generated. So if you take a look, you have created this entire game with just these three main blocks of code, which has many sub blocks. So let's, before we take a look at the other features, let's take a look at how I can make this game even better. So right now, when the user begins the game, he doesn't know what to do. He just has to guess that, okay, I have to collect these fruits. So let's just add a splash screen in the beginning. So you can use the search bar as well to kind of find the blocks that you need. Let's drag the splash screen right here and say this is like eat the fruit game. Now, when we begin the game, I first see this splash where I can press in space or A and then I can begin my game. So this looks great. So if I want to save this and somehow share it with my friends so that they can edit the code, you can do that by clicking on the save icon that you see here. This is going to download this onto your computer and you can share it with uh, your friend on the email. But if you, want to if you just want your friend to play the game and not edit your code, you can share it by pressing the share icon here and click on publish project and click on the share icon. So when you do that, it's going to generate a public URL that your friend can then try to play the game in. If So you might be wondering, is this web-based approach the only way I can play the game? Well, no. If you have any of the MakeCode hardware, which is like the MeoBit or the Adafruit Pi badge, you can also load your games onto this and play on the go. So this is in such an exciting feature of uh, MakeCode that allows you to play the games that you've created on so many devices. And I hope you enjoyed this session and stay tuned for other sessions that may come forward.